Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about The Mandalorian Season 3, some new information for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, The Book of Boba Fett and more. As always my dear friends, before we dive into the news, thank you all so much for 87,000 subscribers. This is the road to 100,000, but without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's just get straight into it. So we're going to begin with The Mandalorian Season 3 and an update about when we can expect it. I touched upon this ever so briefly in yesterday's video, but I thought it'd be a good idea to dedicate a lot more time talking about it since there has been a lot of confusion surrounding the issue. Earlier in the week, Disney Plus released a sizzle reel for everything we can expect in 2022. And while we were not surprised about The Bad Batch Season 2, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and Andor, The Mandalorian did not feature whatsoever. Now, a lot of us were puzzled by this because the assumption based on interviews from various actors has been that we would get it in the fall of 2022. But bear in mind, Lucasfilm never came out and made it official. So there has been a lot of presumption. Now, some fans are saying that it's likely going to be a 2023 release, the same year that we're getting Ahsoka and the Acolyte, we were supposed to get Rogue Squadron, but as we know, that's been delayed. So when you do the maths and a rough calculation, 2023 is actually a far more likely release year than 2022. Let's just quickly run through it. The Book of Boba Fett is seven episodes long and runs from December the 29th of this year to February the 9th. Then it's believed, although not yet confirmed, that we are getting The Bad Batch Season 2 a week or two after that. And if it's like Season 1 and has 16 episodes, that could last until early June. But there have been rumours which I've covered in the past that Season 2 could be 8 episodes, so half of Season 1. But we're just gonna have to wait and see. It's very likely to be just like Season 1 was, with 16 episodes. And then after that, Obi-Wan Kenobi will be sometime in the summer, as I say, if The Bad Batch is 16 episodes, then Kenobi will drop mid-June, but if The Bad Batch is 8 episodes long, then it could be in early May. The Kenobi series, being a mini-series, is 6 episodes long, and then after that we have the Andor series in the fourth financial quarter of 2022, and that's going to span 12 weeks. So to be realistic, it's far too tight of a schedule to fit in The Mandalorian Season 3 as well, unless of course they double up on The Bad Batch or Andor to have two episodes a week, but they've not really done that apart from the premiere of The Bad Batch, so it is looking like there's a reason why Mando was left out of the 2022 Disney Plus sizzle reel, because it's probably going to drop in early 2023. Now this also explains a lot of the recent rumours we've heard. Having such a big gap between The Mandalorian Seasons 2 and 3 an entire three years is probably why they're shoehorning in Grogu, Din Djarin and other characters from The Mandalorian into The Book of Boba Fett. The reason is that we're not left without them for such a long period of time, and having The Mandalorian Season 3 and Ahsoka come out in the same year means that they might be heavily connected. We already know Ahsoka is a spin-off of Mando, but there could be more plot points that intertwine than we realise. Back in October, Carl Weathers confirmed that Season 3 of The Mandalorian was filming, and this will last until early spring of next year. So in theory, there is time for a fall 2022 release date, but given how long Andor Season 1 is going to be, 12 episodes, so 12 weeks, logistically The Mandalorian is likely to be a year later due to such a packed schedule. Having said that, if we want to be very optimistic, 2022 is still a possibility, given that there's been no official announcement on The Mandalorian, and there is a chance the sizzle reel wanted to show some of the 2022 highlights and not every show. After all, they do say and more at the end, but given the success of The Mandalorian, you would assume they would have included it. For now, everything is speculation until Disney outright confirm when the new season is going to arrive. So now, my dear Megalorians, we have some Obi-Wan Kenobi news. Earlier in the year, we got an official cast announcement, but now another actor has been added. Stephen Cannon is going to be in one episode as a moisture farmer. Nothing major, but it is a new development, and it could suggest as a moisture farmer, he is someone that Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru are friends with, and is someone that a 10-year-old Luke is going to meet. In recent times, when it comes to Obi-Wan Kenobi, we've been so focused on Inquisitors and a possible rematch 
match between Obi-Wan and Vader, but we also forget that the series is going to show us a young Luke on Tatooine under the protection of Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen while Obi-Wan is watching from afar. So Stephen Cannon as a moisture farmer might seem like a small role, but it is part of Luke's upbringing on Tatooine. And so now, my dear friends, let's talk about Ming-Na Wen, who's given a tidbit for the Book of Boba Fett with TV Insider. In a recent interview, she spoke about her character and also the relationship between Fennec and Boba Fett. While re-emphasizing things we've heard her say in the past, such as the loyalty between those two characters, she also brings up the fact that as a character, Fennec Shand has gone through a lot of change. As someone who grew up on the streets, Fennec learned to fend for herself from such a young age. But as Ming-Na says, having been left for dead in The Mandalorian Season 1, before Boba rescued her, that near-death experience softened her, and in a way, allowed her to form a bond with Boba Fett, since both of them know what a near-death experience is. And in that process, Fennec found a sense of belonging with Boba, and in a way, it opened her up. I don't want to use the word softened because she does make it clear she's still a badass mercenary and there is loyalty and still a code that she does not break. Very exciting stuff, my dear friends, and we're going to see how their relationship develops in the Book of Boba Fett. We are now just 10 days away and something we have to realize is that our Wednesdays are never going to be the same again. If you remember, Disney have changed their schedule so that everything drops on a Wednesday instead of a Friday. And all throughout 2022, there's going to be something to break down every single week, an episode of all of the upcoming shows. And I can't wait to share those breakdowns, reviews and analysis with all of you amazing folks in this incredible community. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss a single moment. As soon as the Book of Boba Fett drops, that is the signal that this has begun. So finally, my dear Megalorians, we're going to be talking about Grogu and an interesting new theory that's emerged. This is something I've also had in mind ever since season one, and I'm sure many of you guys have also thought the same. What if the Nikto mercenaries that we see in season one, the ones protecting the camp on Arvala 7 that Grogu was in, were actually the good guys? What if they were trying to protect Grogu and were handed him from the person or people who rescued him from Order 66? The biggest mystery surrounding Grogu, after Ahsoka revealed much of his backstory in Chapter 13, is who in the world rescued him from Order 66, who protected him and handed him to these Nikto's on Arvala 7. We all have our theories ranging from Jocasta a new Mace Windu, R2-D2, Anakin Skywalker, and so on. I think it's something Dave Filoni wants to show us. And even though they've been set up to be the bad guys, is that really their entire story? Or is it a misdirect? Let us dive right into it. Although the Nikto mercenaries who held Grogu appear to be villains, one theory argues they may have been good. Near the end of The Mandalorian's first episode, Din Djarin, the Mandalorian himself, managed to find and capture a valuable bounty, the child. To do this, Din and IG-11 killed the entire mercenary group. While this was the clear course of action in the moment, given that the mercenaries were trying to kill Din Djarin, instead of just retaliation, they were trying to protect Grogu, not because they thought he was a valuable asset that could be sold, but because maybe they had the right intentions. Although years of working as thugs for the Huts gave Nikto's a bad reputation, according to this theory, the Nikto mercenary group were not villains at all. Instead, they were former slaves or prisoners in the Empire while Jabba the Hutt was still alive, who were trying to prevent Grogu from meeting the same fate, and were probably mysteriously handed Grogu from the person who saved him during the Great Jedi Purge. This is supported by the fact that the Nikto's wanted to protect Grogu even at the cost of their own lives. And one detail in The Mandalorian that suggests the Nikto's were trying to keep him safe is that they never turned in the bounty on him, dead or alive. Instead, they took Grogu to an almost inaccessible encampment on the remote planet of Arvala 7. And presumably they've been hiding him on Arvala 7 for a very long time. Kawil even mentions to Din that the Nikto's attacked and killed an endless stream of bounty hunters who tried to reach Grogu. And even though they knew he was worth a lot of money, they tried to protect him at all costs. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below of who these Nikto's were. Do you think they were trying to protect him? And who do you think handed Grogu to them? If you enjoyed this one, my dear friends, you know what to do, give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, and also please be sure to check out my Patreon, the link is down there in the description, and you get access to videos not found here on YouTube. But otherwise, may the force be with you all, I'm Star Wars Meg, and I'll see you in the next one.